Hi everyone, this is Bogast Reviews, and today I'm going to be doing another Throwback Thursday. And it's been quite a while since I did my last Throwback Thursday, so I thought I'd come back with a bang. So today's Throwback Thursday, I'm going to be doing a review on the vintage Star Wars Jabba the Hutt playset. So before we take a look at Jabba, let's take a look at the accessories that he comes with. Now, seeing as this is one of the vintage Star Wars toys, um, he actually comes with a lot of accessories, plus he comes with a whole throne. And like recent figures haven't done that. Like the 6 inch Jabba the Hutt, it just, it was just him. I would have preferred a throne and Salacious Crumb. So let's take Jabba off of there. So for his first accessory, it's actually a figure. I'm counting it as an accessory. Let's get the camera to focus there. It's not wanting to focus. There. There is Salacious Chrome, and he looks pretty nice. He's got some great sculpting de detail to him. His skin really feels leathery and gross. <laughs> and the tufts of hair here around his shoulders, and his little mohawk right there look really nice. And he has those creepy little beady eyes. I always thought he was creepy in the movie, just, just because of that laugh, and then he chews C-3PO's eye off. <laughs> He's a fierce little creature. And he has his tail all rolled up there. And he doesn't have any articulation. He just kind of is meant to sit right there on Jabba's throne. And, of course, you get the throne piece itself. Which looks pretty nice. It's got a little bit of texturing to it that makes it feel like real stone. It's got grates right there uh, that also double as the Rancor pit. Um, it's really small, but it is a very nice play feature. Like... You turn uh, the the little gargoyles right here, and it opens the the grate up right there. You can see bones and lizards. It'd be nice if they were collared, but since this is a vintage toy, you know, I'll give it a pass. Now these uh, the the pit the pit right here the the grates right here. They do tend to fall over because once you do that, it'll either fall to the left or to the right, depending on which side you have open there. But you can put figures in it, so let's just go ahead and put Boba Fett down in here. And then Greedo. So you can see that doubles as the Rancor Pit, which is really nice. Then you can close it up like that and still see down in it. And let me sit this back down now. And then also comes with the hookah that attaches right here. And it is loose since it is in two pieces, but it has real string. And Jabba can actually put it up to his mouth, which I will show in just a second. So here is Jabba the Hutt himself. And for an older figure, because, uh, like, for the collar and stuff, I'm not really going to say anything's wrong with because this is an 80s figure. I think it's, uh, 1982, I think's the date on Wait, there's the date. 83. 1983. This is a figure from 1983, so I know the paint detail's not going to be extravagant or the sculpting, but the sculpting is actually pretty good for its time. He has that leathery skin texture and warts sculpted all over him and his tail just feels yeah it feels gross it honestly feels like i expect job of the hut to and then his eyes are set kind of back in his head and they do kind of look like marbles because they're very glossy if you can see right there if you put it up to the light it's kind of glossy which is pretty accurate. And then he actually has his tattoo right here. Or his scarring for Clan uh, Deciliac. Which looks nice. It isn't collared or anything, but it is there. So that's pretty nice. And even though his uh, belly is kind of cream collared, they did kind of do a dry brushing of this uh, kind of like greenish brown collar. There's the back of him. You can see that he is in different collars, which is pretty accurate. It's just there's a little more cream collar to him in, in the movie. So he looks really nice. So for his articulation, 
He's got a swivel at the, the head, I guess. I guess you could say that his head. That when you move it, his tail swivels. And that that is really awesome. I love that. And you can... <laughs> I couldn't resist. And he's got swivel shoulders. They're kind of stiff just from the time period that they're from. And now let's go ahead and put Jabba on his throne. And then, uh, the, the, the thing that I found out to do with this figure is put the hookah in his mouth. Because his mouth is open for it. Drop that. It is a little difficult to, to maneuver here. So what I do is put this in first. I don't drop it like I just did. Because you have to make sure it's in his mouth. That's the difficult part. It kind of just rests right there like that. So I put that in his mouth. And then attach the bowl. There. It's a difficult process, but uh, since I was reviewing the whole thing, I wanted to review it one piece at a time there. And so that's, that's what I do. Wait, there. And then here is... Salacious Crumb. And he just kind of sits on the edge there. And I forgot to mention, he also has this collar right here for Princess Leia. Now, they never actually made a Slave Leia figure. They just made this Leia. Um, th this isn't the only one, of course. Um, oops. Just, just about to knock my camera over here. Um, here is the actual Slave Leia from later on, but this is from, uh, this is from 2013 Vintage Collection, I think. So you can have Princess Leia sitting like that. Right there. But I am using the uh, the new Leia for this. Because the hair is really stiff. And the collar goes around her pretty nicely. She doesn't really want to sit on the throne very well. Or Well, that that's another big problem is... Uh, where did that go? Is this. Her her torso always wants to fall off because this was originally a legacy collection figure. And uh, uh, her torso came in half because she had alternate sitting legs. Where, where did I put that? And uh, she always wants to fall in half because of that. So I do think we need an updated Princess Leia. Okay, where did that go? Okay, so I'm just going to leave that off. I'm just going to... Oh, no. I need that piece. Oh, one under the throne there. So, I do... that. That's why I really don't use this figure. It's because she wants to fall in half repeatedly. Which isn't very accurate to the movies. So, there's that. Which does not look very well, but... On camera, it's kind of hard to do. Let's just... Let's just take her off there for now. <laughs> Let's just put this Princess Leia back on there. Which actually, even though uh, that's her at look from Episode 4, it doesn't really look all that bad on the throne. There. So now for comparison. So, uh, you already saw Greedo and Boba Fett, and of course Princess Leia. So next, I'll show the silver C-3PO next to the throne. And then R2-D2. And there's R2-D2 has been through a lot. It does look really scratched and stuff. But, there they are. It actually looks really awesome together. So, if you can find this set, I'd recommend it. Because, even though it is a vintage toy, it still holds up today. Um, this is what I'm using as my Jabba. Because I don't have a modern one. So, I'm using this one. You know, it's it's really awesome. And, uh, if, if I do have more vintage Star Wars... So if you would like me to review more vintage Star Wars for Throwback Thursday, leave a comment down below and tell me. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.